Tasmania is bitten the dust London calling, see we ain't got no swing Except for the ring of the truncheon thing The ice age is coming, the sun's zooming in Meltdown expected, the weed is growing thin Engines stop running, but I have no fear Cause London is drowning I, I live by the river Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out London Calling by The Clash. Now, the original recording of this is pretty complicated. There are a lot of guitar layers going on. It's a really fun thing to explore. If you're a big Clash fan or you're into multi-track recording, even if you're playing in a band with two guitar parts, learning some of the separation between the parts can be a lot of fun. Though I feel like for most people, they probably want to play the guitar part on their own, play along with the record or play it for their friends. So what we're looking at today is a kind of a one guitar version. If you want to explore it a little bit more, uh, there's a great YouTube guitar teacher called Adrian. Uh, anyone can play guitar, I think is the name of his channel. Uh, he does a little bit more of a forensic breakdown. Uh, no disrespect to his forensic work, but I feel like a couple of things, I, I kind of hear it different, but it really, it is a matter of how you hear it on a particular day, and maybe I'd agree with him on another day, I don't know. You, you can get the stems online as well, so you can check out, your, you know, get make your own opinion up uh, when you listen to the original recordings uh, with just the guitar part, so you can hear a bit more of a separation, because the original recording a lot of the parts are a bit buried we'll talk about that a little bit as we go along but like I said what I want to show you today is kind of a one guitar version where you can play it if you're playing it for yourself or you're playing with your friends or whatever you know or just playing along with the record and having some fun let's get to a close-up check it out now on the original recording there's one guitar playing an E minor one guitar playing just a single note thing and there's another guitar part I hear it as doing something like E minor F G F but trying to do all of those in one guitar part is pretty tricky. Uh, so a kind of a nice uh, workaround for that will be playing E minor. But instead of leaving the bar all the way down, lift it up a little bit. So the top note that you hear is that. And notice that I'm strumming down, pressing the chord down, and then I'm relaxing the fingers. So the chord gets nice and short. Now the next chord that's just, this isn't what's on the original recording, I think it's separated guitar parts, but it's not particularly difficult, it's a little bit stretchy, it's like an F chord basically, it's moving to an F chord, but I'm leaving my first finger down on the E. It's a pretty dissonant sounding chord, but it's kind of, that's what's going on in the original recording, is a whole heap of dissonant. So we have the E minor, F over E, then this time I'd add that top note again. Back to the F over E. Noticing the pumping of the chord to get the notes nice and short. Then when we get into the verses, of course, the rhythm changes and the chords change. We start off with the E minor and we're going to be playing one, two, and four, and. So just a light down up on one end and then two, and. And again, we're doing, we're doing these little presses with the hand. Okay, it's really important, the pressing of the chord. If you don't do that, which doesn't sound bad, but I feel like it's got more of that, the right feel with. Then you probably want to go to an F. Now for the G, I'd recommend doing this G, which is a C shape. So little finger on the 10th fret, third finger on the 9th fret of the fourth string, first finger bars the thinnest three strings, but second finger goes down on the eighth fret on the second string. It's a C-shaped bar chord, but this is a G, there's the root note. Also, tip of little finger trying to mute that thicker string so you don't have to be so fussy on the strumming. And then if you drop little finger down onto the thinner string, still on the tenth fret, relax the bar a bit and make sure that you're not playing the E. You don't want to hear that E note. So you're just really targeting these uh, thinnest four strings. If you get that together, you get E minor. F, G, G with a B bass, but really the key thing is that note, that's what makes it sound right to me. E minor, F, G, G with a B bass, but it's the top note, that's the key. Bitten the dust, London calling, see we ain't got no 
swing He accepts the ring of the truncheon king The ice age is coming, the sun's coming in Okay, now we're starting off with the E minor, but again, slightly changing the rhythm now. One, two, and three, four. Two, and three, and four. So now it's going from the E minor. One, two, and three, four. To a G, two, and three, and four. Up, down. This is the 12th fret on the strings two and three. To first finger in the 10th fret, uh, second string, second finger, 11th fret on the third string. Okay. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Up, down with a pick. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, four. Uh, fifth fret, fifth string root, A shape. One, two, three, four. I live by the river. Call into the immigration zone. Forget it, brother. You can go it alone. Okay, so that chorus again, just one more time. So, I see it just coming. The zoom's coming in. The zoom's coming in. What was it? The sun's zooming in. Let's get that right. I see it just coming. The sun's zooming in. Meltdown expected, the weed is going thin Engines stop running, but I have no fear Cause London is drowning out. I live by the river Super fun song to play this one, especially if it in this kind of simplified form. Like I said, you can go into the minute eye. It is a fun song to jump into the rabbit hole and listen to the different layers and try and figure them out. But most times if I'm playing a tune like this, I'm playing it with my friends or I'm playing it in a band or I'm just jamming along with the original recording. And in those instances, sometimes having a one guitar version can work great. It is also fun to play very specific parts along with the original recording. That can be satisfying. Something I would definitely recommend that you have an explore of. But I feel like on its own, a lot of good things to learn here. Uh, the, the, the pumping of the chords is a really good technique to have where you're pushing the chord down to get the, the and, and, or more importantly, relaxing it after you've played it immediately after you've picked the strings you relax the chord to keep the the sound nice and staccato nice and tight uh, you got that c-shaped bar grip there as well and the alternative uh, g slash b with that different top note i think those things really kind of make it sound a little bit more like the record most of your friends should recognize it if you were jamming along like that so look i really hope you enjoyed this one remember always appreciate you hitting that subscribe button slap me a like and let me know your other favorite clash songs on the justin guitar request board justinguitar.com forward slash songs down the bottom of that page you can request songs that I'm going to do lesson on and I'm doing my best to knock off all of that stuff on the top 10 as regularly as I can I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care of yourselves bye bye